Hey everyone, I have some exciting news to share with you about the relationship between vitamin D deficiency and autism. There was a research study that was just published about a month ago from Sweden, and I'm going to give you just the, 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 the summary of it. What they found by looking at the vitamin D levels in hundreds of people is that low levels of 25 hydroxy vitamin D was almost pathognomonic, as they say, for the diagnosis of autism, which means almost every single person that had been diagnosed with an autistic spectrum disorder had low levels of 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Now, this is very, very exciting because up to this point, we've all kind of heard about vitamin D and we kind of hypothesize. There's been a little bit of research, but this is a very good study that explains very clearly that vitamin D deficiency has a direct relationship to autism and autistic spectrum disorders. Now, please do not run out and go supplement with vitamin D. That, that could be dangerous, actually. I want to explain why. But I want to give you some reasons why, why would an autistic spectrum child or a, a person have low levels of vitamin D? Well, one way that it happens is prenatal. You know, low levels of vitamin D in the mother can cause, it, well, that's the, where the child's getting their vitamin D from. So those low levels of vitamin D cause abnormal brain development. I mean, vitamin D is what we call a neurosteroid. I mean, it has a hundreds of different functions, but it is directly related to brain development. There's been a couple of good studies done on that. So that's why it's important that the mother that is pregnant, if she wants to prevent autism or, prevent, or decrease the risk of autism, she needs to make sure she has adequate levels of vitamin D. But again, if you're pregnant and watching this, I suggest that you get your vitamin D levels tested now because there's two vitamin D's I'm going to tell you about that I think need to get tested. In fact, I may not tell you about them because it's a little, maybe I'm giving away too much information and it might be a little more dangerous than uh, helpful. So there's, you know, the prenatal. Now, the other thing that's related to prenatal, so, so mom has low vitamin D, the baby has low vitamin D, now the baby has a dysregulated immune system because vitamin D is one of the main players in keeping your, your immune system coordinated. This is why, I mean, I can't, it's almost every child that I see that has been diagnosed with an autistic spectrum disorder has got low levels of 25 hydroxy vitamin D, almost every one of them. So that's one sort of scenario. It starts prenatal. Now, here's the other scenario postnatal. So there's a whole other way that a child can develop vitamin D deficiency, and that is through malabsorption. You know, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. It's really a, a hormone. And it's got to be absorbed through the GI lining. If the GI lining is not appropriately permeable, right, it doesn't allow things through like it should, then it's clogged. And that clogging of the absorption process means the child can become vitamin D deficient and vitamin A deficient, a bunch of other things. Now, I've seen this several times. In fact, I have a a child whose story I'll be putting up pretty soon. It's a pretty long story. Uh, all we did to help this child was correct his malabsorption, and his vitamin D levels went up along with some supplementation, and his whole neurological picture changed. So what would cause this malabsorption, this clogging of the gut? Well, the number one thing is gluten. The number two things are other food proteins that the child may be intolerant to that's causing this inflammatory action. We get mucus. We get a plugged gut. You can also have yeast infections. You can also have other gut bacterial infections that have to be tested for. I mean, if you're not being tested, if your child's not being tested for these, your doctor's not leaving every stone unturned, okay? You've got to turn over everything. You've got to look for it. And the best test to do is this DNA uh, PCR test. Um, once the child has a clogged gut, they don't absorb the vitamin D, and that's probably due to uh, inflammatory actions to gluten, case, and soy, or gut infections. Then all heck breaks loose because then they've got a disordered immune system and they can develop autoimmune attack against themselves and that's how the cascade happens. Now, I know you're thinking about supplementation. Don't do it. Your child needs to have their 25 hydroxy vitamin D tested and they need to have their 1, 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels tested because if your child's 125 is too high and you give them vitamin D, you're going to make them much, much worse. Um, that's all I have time for today, but just remember there's a huge link between vitamin D and autism, and uh, it's not one you ha cannot ignore it.